Hey gang, it's Maria here from GoalieTrainingPro.com. Welcome to Goalie Training Pro TV episode. maybe 16 400 I've lost count <laughs> but uh, you know what I was at a conference last week in San Diego and um, it was a fantastic conference but I'm way behind and way scrambled so let's get right at it today's topic is um, I did a po I did a episode a couple weeks ago on how eight-year-olds should train so this episode is all about how 50 plus year old goalie should train really 40 plus but let's say 50 plus <laughs> how you should train because it's different as well and somebody asked so it was a great idea they're like hey how about goalies over 50 I was like what a great idea so that's what this episode is going to be all about um so let's just hit on the key points number one you do too much volume. So um, you, you think almost, oh, you know what, I'm older now, so I need to work harder. Um, and it's because it's going to take longer for my body to adapt. I need to do more than I used to do. That's a huge mistake. That will have to big time diminishing returns and have you spending more time on the sideline, on the bench, in the physio's office, in the doctor's office, than, you know, throwing your arms up in the air, getting clobbered by your teammates because you just got another another shot out <laughs> um the next big mistake is not enough emphasis on strength so again you think i'm getting older i don't want to hurt myself i better lighten up my weight so um and even goalies some goalies just think this anyway that oh you know i'm a goalie so i should do high repetitions with a lighter weight so i won't get bulky being bulky isn't really a big concern for, for too many of us. Some of us do, some of us, not me, uh, do bulk up a little bit easier. And so we need to modify things there. But for most people, like people spend millions, like billions of dollars every year on supplements to try to help them gain muscle mass. So really the ongoing problem isn't like, geez, I'm just getting too jacked to be a goalie so don't be shy to add increase the weight a little bit and, and do some heavier lifting because that's what taps into what's called high threshold motor units and those are a fast twitch fiber which is your explosive powerful muscle if you're lifting you know 12 reps 15 reps that taps into a slow twitch fiber now it has its place and just like the younger athletes, your training should follow a periodized training scheme where you have, you know, different phases and you know the goal of the phase and the specific adaptations you're after. Um, but for that higher range, we're more looking at kind of tissue adaptation and connective tissue strengthening. But then for our performance outcomes, we really do want to get heavier loads, not one rep maxes, but you know, four, four, six um, reps for some of your exercises. The next thing is you don't spend enough time on speed. I'm gonna circle back to some of these and fill in a few more details. But again, as we, my uh, one of my mentors, a fellow named Peter Twist, a lot of you probably heard of him. He was a very successful strength coach for the Vancouver Canucks for many, many years. But one of his sayings that's stuck with me all these years is that as we age, everything becomes aerobic. Um, you know, we start, you know, even some of us start, oh, I think I'll run a marathon, <laughs> you know, and we, we sort of become plotters rather than, um, you know, uh, a cheetah or something. So we want to try to keep that speed element, but again, in the right way, because bad things can happen to us as we age. Um, so, you know, uh, the mistake that goes in that number one mistake is we don't have enough speed. We don't train enough speed. The second mistake is that we don't prep for speed and we're just like, yeah, I'm going to go sprinting today. And that's, uh, that's where we have problems. I think the sort of the fourth key mistake that I'm going to, um, share with you is that you want to dive right in. You know, you get motivated, you get excited and, uh, it's like, um, cause I know, cause I talked to you and I've just finished doing interviews for the turning pro coaching group. And I do have uh, a, a few adult goalies in that group. And so one of the hardest parts of working with that population, because you're a grown up and you're used to doing what you want to do is trying to get them to understand this is a marathon, not a sprint. 
we're not going to dive right in. And even though you tell me, no, no, that's how I have to do it. It's just, it's the way I am. I know myself. I have to just go all in. It's like you can go all in, but it's going to be an a, on-ramp, <laughs> not just <laughs> onto the, onto the freeway. So those are, those are the big four. Why are those things important? Well, number one is we're not 16 years old anymore. So I'm 48 now. I, I notice it. I've had to change the way I train when I train elite athletes and pro hockey players. I notice around the time they're around 28 years old, plus or minus, we need to really change our approach. A young high school, even college athlete, that's one of the hard things because you can almost do anything to them and they'll get some better and they're pretty durable. So that's why there are a lot of, you know, really insane training programs that get touted as being so successful because this college guy, age guy could do it or this junior guy could do it. But just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it and doesn't mean there isn't a better way. So, um, you know, with us, yeah, injury is probably the biggest, one of the biggest things. So we will uh, rupture our Achilles. If you are one of those athletes who kind of always um, feels really stiff in, in your Achilles, Achilles is like your heel cord. You feel stiff in there when you first get out of bed. It's kind of cranky until it gets going. It, you know, you, ha you have to walk like a little bit of a peg leg. Um, or when you start running, you kind of feel it. And then it warms up and it goes away. Red alarm lights should be going off in your head right now if that's you. And it's me too. I actually did genetic testing um, for my nutrition a couple of years ago that was really, really interesting. Um, I found out that I'm a little bit intolerant to starch. I'd, I noticed I'd felt better when I didn't eat uh, gluten-containing foods, but I knew I wasn't gluten... Um, um, gluten intolerant I, um, because I could eat it and I wouldn't, you know, get sick or anything like that. But, um, so we did this testing and that's, that's what we found. Other things, sensitivity to caffeine and it was really, really helpful. But another thing it showed is it's kind of your propensity to, um, like power sports. Well, a lot, a lot of good. Well, luckily it showed that I was, uh, like highly, highly, um, adapted to more endurance based exercises which I knew because I was a varsity skier and, and then rowing was my second competitive sport and um so we kind of knew that and I picked okay but um it also talked a little bit about tissue quality and susceptibility to uh, ruptures and and so that came back to be like you are yeah you're one of those people so don't ignore that um, you know, and, and people be like, oh yeah, yeah, it's been like that for years. Yeah, exactly. It's been like that for years. So what's happening is you have kind of a low grade tendinosis or a low grade irritation. And then that tissue. So when I'm stiff like that and I get going, well, maybe I do some little micro tears in the tissue. And then that tissue has to remodel. Well, it's like the, uh, three little pigs, right? <laughs> it's like, the first house is built, whatever, straw, huff and puff and blow your house down, you know? So this is a little, I'm taking a little liberties with the story, but let's say I rebuild my house. Well, now I'm going to make it out of wood. And then the big bad wolf comes, huff and puff, blow my house down. So this time I'm like, you know what? I'm building this sucker out of bricks. Good luck to you, Mr. Big Bad Wolf, because you're not blowing it down. So that's what our, kind of what our body does. It's like, okay, like we'll remodel this tissue. Oh, okay. We'll remodel it a little stronger. Okay, we're going to remodel it really strong. So then where we had a lot of elastic properties, and which are kind of the springy bits, right? And then some plastic properties, which are more kind of the stronger bits. Um, the percentage, the ratio starts to shift. So now we get a tendon that, and it needs to be kind of springy, that needs to be springy, but it's now... Uh, getting stiffer and so then what we do is we go out and decide oh we're gonna play some basketball or oh I'm gonna start this sprinting program that I downloaded from the internet and I haven't sprinted since high school or I'm gonna do this cool agility drill that I saw Maria do on YouTube and toing <laughs> and you will know that you've torn your ruptured your Achilles tendon because you're gonna be 
all by yourself with nobody around you, uh, wondering who just kicked me in the back of the leg. Somebody kicked me. It must have been a squirrel. I don't know what it was. And I've seen it a million times. When I worked at the physio clinic at the Fowler Kennedy, we used to do medical coverage for um, Gus Macker, three on three basketball, play it again, road hockey, these things. And you would see it time and time again. They'd be like, you know, you, and you'd sometimes just see them peg legging along. Hey, what happened? Oh, you know what? Somebody slashed me in the back of the leg. Oh, really? Did you see who slashed you in the back of the leg? No. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so don't do that. That's uh, rupturing your Achilles is not nice. The other big one is the hamstrings. Like your body doesn't know like, oh, my owner might just decide to start sprinting <laughs> and I better uh, adjust my hamstrings so that they're ready for that uh, type of action. It's like, all it knows is what you do. So really, like your hamstrings are pretty much equipped to let you sit on your ass <laughs> at work all day, excuse my language. Um, you know, walk into the rink, play some hockey, uh, you know, that's what they're equipped for. So hamstrings are another big one. I've seen patellar tendons go, which is a bad, bad one. That's a, that's a trip to the operating room, 100%. So these bad things happen and without sort of warning, other than the Achilles, it'll be kind of like, yeah, it's, yeah, I guess it's always been, gets a little sore sometimes. Um, so, and they're, and they're not nice at all. So if I had a dollar for every time I've said this in the last week, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You have to go into that with that mindset. You have to be thinking at least a year. You know what? I'm going to build up over at least a year. Are you going to see, does so that I mean like, oh, so I'm not going to see any results until a year? No, you're going to see tons of amazing results, even in the first four weeks, but we're not going to get to that advanced explosive type of training, you know, until probably three, four months into it, we'll start introducing it and then we'll work through different cycles. Number two, you're not in high school anymore. <laughs> when you're in high school, you had hair and a Camaro and wore surf shorts every day. <laughs> and yeah, you're not in high school anymore. Uh, so don't be doing the work. Oh, this is what I used to do in high school. And I was the strongest guy in the whole, you know, uh, universal gym set that we had upstairs in the gym room. You're also not in the NHL. So um, you, you know, the guys that are in the NHL can train the way they do because they're such great athletes that they have the attributes to be able to play in the NHL um, and to be able to do that kind of training. I mean, obviously the training helps them perform, but it's not like, well, if I do the training that Connor McDavid does, then I'll be able to play as good as Connor McDavid does. It doesn't work that way. So your key focus points are mobility and stability. And I've posted tons and tons of drills for you. If you just go to Goalie Training Pro TV on YouTube and search goalie mobility, goalie stretches, um, goalie stability, you'll find tons and tons of stuff. That's where you need to start. Then the next thing is your functional strength. So if you currently go to a, a fitness club and you do anything on machines now unless there's an injury and you've been specifically told hey you got to use the leg press or something you shouldn't be leg pressing you shouldn't be doing knee extensions you shouldn't be doing hamstring curls lying on the bench or standing or sitting you shouldn't be doing that groin machine embarrassing groin machine you sit on you shouldn't be doing the like well if you want to do the biceps curls i don't care because it's not really functional anyway but you shouldn't be sitting down to do chest press none of that stuff you should be doing you know uh Good body weight training, like good push-ups, body rows, um, single leg squats with perfect form. It has to be perfect because, again, your body doesn't bounce back as well as you could. In high school, you could do crappy form and not have your knees feel like they're going to explode. Not so much now when we're in our 40s and our 50s. Um, so you'll use dumbbells. Um, you can use a barbell, but just be careful because, again, it's spinal compression. Um, and as you know, I had trouble with my back last spring, um, some like a uh, bit of a bulging disc, some facet joint arthritis, a little bit of an end plate fracture, you know, kind of wear and tear from choosing the wrong sports and, and maybe choosing the wrong profession for back health. But I talked to one of my other mentors, Dr. Peter Fowler, who um, 
is a world-renowned orthopedic surgeon. He's retired now, but we were looking at my MRI results because they wanted to, or they did, they suggested that I have some, or the doctor I saw suggested I have some injections into my back, like into my facet joints, which did not uh, turn my crank all that much. So I asked uh, I, the chief, as I call him, <laughs> and he looked at it and he said, no, you know what, like if you got that end plate fracture, uh, and that disc bulging, so that disc space is squishing down and then the facets are gonna kind of rest on each other. There's not gonna be so much space and that's why you're getting that arthritis. So, you know, having an injection is, is gonna maybe make it feel better, but it's not gonna fix it. And really, I've been working really diligently with my physiotherapist, Brian Gastaldi, who's, who's one of the best in Canada. And, and with my just very basic core stabilization and not hard core stabilization, like, Planking from my knees, side planking from my knees, not to the point of exhaustion, just to the onset of fatigue. I'm reading Stu McGill's book, The Gift of Injury. It's been really helpful, but we've got it under control. So, you know, I'm going to think twice before adding compression to my things because, you know, my spine's already had 48 years of compression. So we'll go nicey nice on it. Not to say I won't do it, but we'll go nicey nice. Um, then, <laughs> and I've done this probably since I turned 44, 45, I just have a standing physiotherapy appointment. Usually it's once a month in the summer, in the off season when I'm coaching a lot more every two weeks, just to, just to stay on top of things, especially as a goalie. And even since I've been playing goalie, you know, my pelvis gets out of alignment way more often. So I go in, I see Brian, he looks after me and keeps things from little things from becoming big things. And then the final thing that I want to mention is Let's focus on power first and then worry about speed. So power would just be, you know, building some strength. It might be like squat, jump and stick, learning the technique for landing a jump, might be some like easy agility patterns, even like a, like a little mini hurdle hop and absorb. Then we'll start doing some speed, some sprinting, some change of direction. You need that foundation and you always need to wade in very, very cautiously. And it's hard because we forget, right? We just take off. I do the same thing when I'm coaching. I'll, there's an agility drill I'm coaching. I'm not warmed up at all. And I'll just, you know, show it and think, oh, one of these days, Maria, you're going you're gonna to be a crumpled mass with no Achilles left. Um... Oh, you know what? Sorry, I lied. One more thing, one more thing. Warm up. Your dynamic warm up is going to be so important even before you go on the ice in terms of your performance. Get in that dynamic warm up. Again, I've got a bunch of them over on um, Goalie Training Pro TV on YouTube. I'll try to remember to post one. If I forget, somebody type in the comments, hey, Maria, could you post that warm up you mentioned? And I'll uh, get it to you. And if you want a little um, free program just to get an idea, I did put one together. It's called Beer League MVP. Um, I don't know the URL, but <laughs> I'll, I'll post it uh, in maybe in the comments or in the description or somewhere so you can get it. It's totally free, but it just has things laid out for you if you want to check that out. Otherwise, this is Maria from Goalie Training Pro TV. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, people. I'll catch you next time.